What's going on, y'all? Machiavelli Mills TV. So look, y'all, I'm making this video because one of my subscribers requested that I make this video a while ago uh, because the, the, the topic is really about three weeks old or something like that. I'm just getting around to making this video, so I apologize for that. Nonetheless, I feel like it's important for me to discuss, for me to discuss this topic. So y'all know T-Pain. T-Pain came out and said that Tupac, yes, Tupac Shakur, Pac, would get killed lyrically by today's rappers, right? I'm paraphrasing, but he said something along the lines of like, basically saying that Pac would get smoked. He would get slaughtered by today's rap competition. And I'm going to just say this, that I firmly, strongly disagree with that, right? And here's the, this this is the, the my main point for real. Pac was rapping and thriving in an era where nearly half of the rap game was lyrically immaculate. Like, they were immaculate. They were outstanding. Nearly half of the rap game was outstanding. They were like real lyricists in the rap game at that point. Seriously, you could barely get on if you couldn't spit at least a little bit in the 90s. You could barely get on. Now, of course, some one-hit wonders snuck through the cracks. You had some guys that made some little catchy songs, but they wouldn't really spit us like that. But for the most part, you had to really be nice to be thriving during that time. And Pac was at the pinnacle of the rap game then. Right, like it was more spitters, more lyrical, real lyrical rappers during the 90s than there are today. And Pac was still at the mountaintop. So regardless of what era Pac would have, he would have adapted. He would have adapted to the new era, right? Like, so I'm thinking about today's time of recent memories since the early 2000s. You had guys like Wayne, uh, Jigga, you had Kendrick, Cole, Griselda, so on and so forth. All these different levels of spitters. Um... Uh, Outkast and Andre 3000, so on and so forth. All these different rappers came. I think Pac would have adapted to that. I feel like he would have learned and he would have still figured out a way to stay relevant and stay on top. Even in like, and, and it's true. I'm going to say this because people always say this and bring this up. Pac wasn't the best technical lyricist in the 90s. He wasn't the best technical lyrical rapper for real. He wasn't bar heavy. He wasn't punchline heavy. But his delivery, his flow... His charisma was extraordinary. I'm going to say that again. His delivery, his flow, his charisma were extraordinary. Seriously, when you heard him rap, you can like you can hear the passion in his voice on tracks for real. The way he could tell the way he could tell a story and evoke raw emotions from fans, that was special. That's a special gift. Everybody not gifted with that, man. That was a rare feeling. That was a rare thing in music. It's only certain rappers where when a person, when, it, when a rapper spits, the fans feel something, it evokes emotions from you. Only certain rappers can do that. Like, for real, like, like I remember th remember watching DMX and seeing him, like, his raps, you can feel that shit in your heart and soul. And you had that same effect with Pac. So he still would have been thriving. He still would have fig figured out a way to be, like, at the top. Like, when I listen to All Eyes On Me, that's one of my favorite albums of all time. Like that that album, that's timeless music. That's timeless, timeless music. Yes, Pac wasn't a lyrical, miracle rapper, but his words touched souls. It touched souls for real. Like it was, that wasn't no joke. His words touched souls. And I'm gonna say this too, man. When people think about rap, rap isn't always about punchlines, metaphors, similes, so on and so forth. Pac spoke from the heart, and fans resonated with that. They resonated with him speaking from the heart. Which, which uh, basically allowed him to make great songs. It's a lot of great lyricists. They cannot, they can't, they're not at the top of the rap game because they're not great songwriters. Yeah, they can rap. They can, you know, lyrical, spherical, lyrical, lyrical. They can do all of that. They can do, you know, um, all the different little cadences. They can rhyme a whole bunch of big words and, and they can sound like they just read a thesaurus all their life, right? But when it comes to song making, they can't make a hit at all. They can't, they can't make a hit record. Pac was able to do that time and time again. He was a great song maker. Look, when I listen to Do For Love, Hail Mary, I Get Around, All Eyes On Me, Brenda's Got A Baby, that's some great ass song making, fam. Everybody cannot do that. So yeah, you would have had Kendrick still spitting, Cole spitting, Griselda and them spitting. You would have had Jigga spitting like that, Wayne. You would have had all them errors. And Pac still would have been around. He still would have been around. I always said that Biggie was more lyrical than Pop, but at the same time, Pop's impact was a giant. Was it was gigantic? 
And Biggs was gigantic as well. But I'm saying, even though he wasn't as lyrical as Pac, he, he didn't have the same lyrical ability. Excuse me. He wasn't as lyrical as Big. Pac didn't have the same lyrical ability as Big. He still was at the mountaintop for real. Because it's more, to, it's more to rap than just being lyrical smiracle. Furthermore, too, lyrical is more than just rhyming words without saying nothing. Because there's a lot of guys in the rap industry that can rhyme a whole lot of big words together, but don't be talking about a goddamn thing. Don't be saying nothing at all. Just rhyming a whole bunch of big words together. Yeah, I know you can rhyme cat, hat, scat, bat, flat. All, I know you can do all of that. But what are you really saying? Pop was saying something in his music. So it wouldn't have been all he would have been getting killed, killed left and right. No, fam. If you would have put him on the track with certain all them guys that I named, he still would have shined bright. Because he was doing it back then in the 90s. When every all them dudes, and of course, lyrics, metaphors have evolved since that time period. But still, man, he was he would have still flourished. Because this is the thing you gotta remember. Pac was getting better album after album after album. He was getting better. Right? And I feel like we really missed out on a lot of his greatest works. To be honest with y'all, I feel like we missed his greatest works. But I highly, this one thing I, one thing I know about Pac for real, he wouldn't have stayed stagnant as an artist. He was an artist in every sense of the word. So as a rapper, I don't, I don't think he would have stayed stagnant at all. In fact, his work, his work, uh, work ethic was second to none. His work rate was tremendous. He would push out songs, and it wasn't just like making little filler songs. It was real, real ass songs he was making, like real great music he was making time and time again doing it over and over again he would have figured out a way to remain relevant man he would have figured out a, a way to remain a top dog in the game for ages in my opinion because he had a special way of connecting with the people he had a special way of connecting with fans that a lot of rappers don't have so yes yeah, some dudes could have been you know they could have been rapidly rap type and all that but it would have still been what it was. Like I said, Pac was a pure artist rather than a rapidly rap guy. Like, again, his passion, it, you, it came out in his own right. When I hear picture, fam, picture me rolling when I hear that shit to this day. I don't know. I feel my spirit get lifted. When I listen to Run the Streets, that shit is, that is gold. Run the Streets, when I, that, that rings loudly. His passion, his song writing, it rings loudly when I hear them songs. Even when I hear Checkout Time. From All Eyes On Me album, like, fam, what? Like, come on now, I'm early every morning, breath stinking as I'm yawning, just another sunny day in California. Like, that shit, what? I don't know, we gotta go. That's just a whole, it's a whole different vibe, man. So I don't know, like, pain, yeah, some dudes that were more lyrical than Pac and so on and so forth, but he still would have been able, he still would have been able to hold down the fort. And he would have kept the flag flying high for California and... You wouldn't have seen a period where California was really like, we're not relevant in the rap game until you had to have game come back and put the light back on it. But for some years, California was dry for real when it comes to being in the rap industry. And I don't think you would have had that going if Pac was around. Now, we all know Pac really from the, from the East Coast. He from Baltimore, for real, right? He from over there in Baltimore. But he spent a lot of time, you know, on the West Coast out there in, in the Bay Area, in Oakland. Um... You know, then he was in uh, L.A. and stuff when he was with Death Row. So I think he would have been able to keep that coast alive and keep it thriving during that time period. Because until game, it wasn't really, it was, I mean, you had Snoop, but I mean, no newer artist was really flying the flag and, and really repping strong before game came around. Then game, and, you know, of course, Kendrick, so on and so forth. But yeah, man, like, nah, bro, I think in any era he would have still figured out a way to still be dominant. Seriously, I'm not even lying. Like, again, the last shit we was hearing from Pac was still what was powerful records, man. When you listen to Keep Your Head Up and all that, you hear that, it's a different type. It's a, it's a whole different type of pen, fam. Different type of pen, man. Machiavelli Mills TV, I'm out. Peace. Y'all like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave comments in the comment section. Thank y'all for rocking with me. I'm gone.